is Roger Edgecombe. I'm the Director of Energy Operations based in Perth, Australia. I've been with RPS for 17 years. I joined in 2005 doing field operations, seismic data acquisition, um, project management, a little bit of data processing. I actually recently heard somebody say, uh, last week actually, there was a, somebody gave a talk about um, about how they came into geology and they sort of said that 90 some odd percent of people sort of stumble into geology and I would have to say that I fall into that category as well. Um, coming out of high school at a time where jobs weren't plentiful, I knew I needed to go to university so off I went. I had to pick three sciences so I picked two that I didn't mind and I had to pick a third. Didn't like that one, didn't like that one picked geology because it sounded interesting. I grew up on an island in the east coast of Canada and so uh, marine processes, fluvial processes, erosion were all very fascinating to me and those are all found in the rock record and I just fell in love with it so I ended up doing my degree, two degrees in geology and then so I always say that I'm trained as a geologist but coming out of university and finishing my master's, uh, as I was looking for employment, I somehow landed in geophysics and started on a seismic crew, managing a seismic crew, which I knew pretty much nothing about, but picked it up and 27 years later, sort of here I am. So the way I explain geophysics uh, to the make it understandable to people, it's, it's taking x-rays of the earth. If you're standing on a road, and you're able to physically pick up a slice of the earth below your feet, then you're taking an x-ray of the earth. I think one of the things in terms of being successful is, you know, sort of, you know, it goes without saying you apply yourself and whatnot. But what I have seen over, you know, working in exploration is a boom and bust. So there's ups and downs. And one of the things that I believe will help the younger generation be successful is to not specialize. As the industry goes through these booms and busts, you have to be able to be sort of somewhat nimble and kind of go where the industry takes you or where the skills are required. And being a generalist, I think, allows people to have that, that flexibility rather than focusing on a technical specialty. One of the things that I value most about my career to date, I've been lucky enough to have worked or lived in every province or uh, territory within Canada. Most of them are not very exotic, but I did. I, I do feel fortunate to have to have been able to see a lot of these very remote places that, like I say, most people wouldn't wouldn't see or would have to spend a lot of money to see. I have been as far north uh, as about 600 kilometers from the North Pole. I spent a summer in the high Arctic. It was a fantastic opportunity. I did not see a polar bear. I was not interested in seeing one, which I was quite thankful for. Um, but the flip side of that is you spend, you know, when you're involved in exploration on land or I suppose or on marine, you spend a lot of time in very remote locations that are not very glamorous. Um, but you still do get to see a lot of the countryside, like I said earlier, that you wouldn't have normally had an opportunity to see. I've been in Australia for six months, just over six months. I do feel very fortunate that I'm here. You know, it's not even a year ago. I know when I get to the year mark, it'll be like, wow, who knew a year ago that I'd be living in Australia? It is absolutely amazing. I love the people, I love, you know, the city. Uh, and the fact that my career has taken me from, you know, a small island in Canada all the way across Canada to now one of the largest islands living in Perth, Australia, like who knew? Like who knew that that was even possible?